Muhammad and Hafsa. The text and parody are based on Aisha Ahmad's article titled Allah frowns over abstaining from sex with slave girls. Surah number 66 at Tarim. Context of the Surah. It was Hafsa's turn to sleep with the Prophet. Her maid, Maria Kutia, a gift from the king of Alexandria, was also in her room when the Prophet walked in. Maria's was very attractive and voluptuous young teenager. She aroused carnal desires in any man who looked at her. Then her prophet was not any man. He was endowed with 30 men libido by Allah, Bukhari, Volume 1, Book 5, Number 268, narrated Katata. Quote, Prophet was given the sexual strength of 30 men. To be alone with Maria, Prophet sent Hassan to her dad's house with a phony excuse that Umar wanted to see her. Hassa, your dad's looking for you. You better go see him right now. Okay, Rasulullah. Umar was not home when Hassa reached her dad's place a few houses down the street. Mom, where's dad? He has gone to the Al-Manasi field near Bakir to defecate. Why doesn't he go to the field behind our house? Because it is a sunnah to relieve yourself at the place where the Prophet relieves himself. I will wait for him. It may be a long wait. He hides there afterwards to spy on Prophet's wives. Spy on the Prophet's wives? What for? To make sure they are veiled according to the surah 33 verse 59 when they come to relieve themselves. As you know, this ayah was sent by Allah at your dad's request. Bukhari, volume 8, book 74, number 257, narrated Aisha. Umar bin al-Khattab used to say to Allah's apostle that your wives be veiled, but he did not do so. The wives of the Prophet used to go out to answer the call of nature by night, only at Al-Manasi. One Sabda, the daughter of Zama, went out and she was a tall woman. Umar bin al khattab saw her while she was defecating in a group and said, I have recognized you, O Sauda. He, Umar, said so. He was anxious for some divine orders regarding the veil, the veiling of women. So Allah revealed in Surah 33, verse 5-9, Al-Hijab, a complete body cover excluding the eyes. Umar doesn't like what he saw at Al-Manasi, he wished there is a divine command to cover women's body completely. Allah quickly revealed the order of wearing hijab for Muslimah in the Quran, Surah 33, verse 59. Allah agreed with me on three things and revealed ayahs. One of them was the verse of the veiling of women, Surah 33, verse 59. Well, I can't wait that long. It's my turn with Prophet. He must be in bed waiting for me. It is not good to keep your men waiting for too long for sex. Bye-bye. Oh, the Prophet is indeed on Hassa's bed, but definitely not waiting for her. When Hassa returned, she found Prophet in bed, but not waiting. He was in action with her maid, Maria. <laughs> Hafsa was outraged. She had a temper of her dad, Umar, and she started hollering at him. Rasulullah, you lied and deceived me to screw my maid? Hafsa, mind your language. Surah 33 verse 32 says you should talk to Allah's Prophet in an honorable manner. O wise of the Prophet, speak to the Prophet in an honorable manner. I will speak honorably to the Prophet when the Prophet stops acting dishonorably himself. Having sex with slave girls is not dishonorable. Allah has made them halal for me. Surah 33 verse 50 Muhammad, sex with slave girls and captured women is halal for you. I don't give a rat's behind who is halal for you and who is not. You can have sex with a she camel for all I care, but I do not want it in my bed on my night. Hassa, calm down. I will tell you something. If you keep this incident a secret between you and me and don't tell anyone, I take an oath that I will never touch Maria again. And please cool down first. Go have a drink of cold water. Okay, I have to go pee also. 
Hase returned after a short while and found her husband again in bed with Maria. You can wish for memory. You can just say you will not get her again. Yes, I, I did, but I'll only read Psalm 66, uh, verse 1. After he left, it says, Muhammad, why do you forbid yourself what Allah has made lawful to you just to please your wife? What about the oath you took? Allah dissolves my oath by Surah 66, verse 2, which says, Allah has ordained for you the dissolution of your oath, and Allah is your Mawla. The next morning, when Prophet returned from Fajr prayer, his wives gave him dirty looks and a silent treatment instead of happily greeting him like every day. As smart as our Prophet was, he knew right away that Hasa had ratted him out and had divulged the last night's incident to all other wives who incidentally hated Maria for her beauty and Prophet's fondness of her. Prophet was pissed off and rushed to Hasa's room. When I told you to keep last night's incident with Maria a secret to yourself, I trusted you. Why did you spread it? Who informed you that I spread it? Allah informed me. The Prophet had trusted one of his wives with a certain incident. Then she spread it, and God let him know about it. He then told his wife. She asked him, Who informed you of this? He said, I was informed by Allah, Surah 66, verse 3. Hassa started trembling with fear. She had no idea. Allah spied for the Prophet and tattled to him his wife's private talks and gossips. Angry Prophet then gathered all his resentful wives and conveyed the following healing message from Allah to them, which had just arrived. Surah 66, verse 5. If Muhammad divorced you all, Allah will give him in exchange wives better than you who are submissive and devout. That message was a destiny to the scared wives. A divorcement starving to death, since nobody was allowed to marry Prophet's wife according to an earlier ayah. The Prophet continued. Surah 66, verse 10 to 11. On one hand, wives of Allah's prophets, Noah and Lut, misbehaved with their husbands, and they were put in hellfire. On the other hand, wife of Kafir, Pharaoh, was well behaved and she was awarded paradise. Ali wives started really starving to death his one thing. Burning in hellfire forever was something else. They grabbed his feet and begged him for mercy. The merciful prophet then took pity on them and decided to apply abstention clause of Surah 4 verse 34. Abstaining from sex with wives as a disciplinary action. He could have divorced them like Allah suggested or beaten them under scourging clause of Surah 4 verse 34. He stayed away from all his wives for a month and slept exclusively with Maria to humiliate them further and make them jealous. Bukhari, volume 3, book 43, number 648. The Prophet did not go out to his wives because of the secret which Hassa had disclosed to Aisha. And he said that he would not go to his wives for one month as he was angry with them when Allah admonished him for his oath that he would not approach Maria. Allah also decided to pitch in the misery of Prophet's wives by making Maria pregnant with the baby boy, Ibrahim something Mohammed desired most and which he could not be delivered by any of the nine resident wives. But then Ibrahim died when he was two. The End